Hey guys, welcome back to my channel for my Q&A video. I'm filming in a different spot as you can see and that is thanks to my new light which is thanks to my patrons. So I don't know if this lighting looks any good but I still thought it would be fun to film in a different spot anyway. I'll figure it out anyway. Eventually I'll figure it out and I'll have my set spots that I film in so bear with me during the experimenting. And also let me know what you think if this is working or not. I have a ton of questions. Thank you to everybody who submitted questions. I may end up having to split this into two parts. We'll see how we go. So I'm just going to jump right in with the first question, which is from Lois. And she asked, I would love to hear about the availability of natural, organic, local foods, wine, etc. that are so abundant in New Zealand. So organic, you can buy organic fruits and vegetables and foods here. I don't actually know where to buy organic meat. I think some of the meat is labeled organic, but it's not like a big thing here. Overall, the meat industry in New Zealand is not too bad. There's grass-fed beef, for example, and things like that. So you can get organic, but you can't just say, oh, I need one kilogram of lamb shoulder for this recipe. I'm going to go and buy that organic. I think it's more like what's available from what I've seen anyway. Foods you can get organic. They had a thing on the radio the other night about how it needs to be regulated. There's BioGrow, I think they call it. They certify certain companies organic. But that is up to the company if they choose to have that certification process. But they can just claim to be organic and not actually be fully organic, which is shocking. So that's kind of being looked into at the moment. Hopefully that will change. Series Organics is a company that you can trust. They are certified organic. So if you want to get something like, you know, tin chopped tomatoes, I buy organic. Or I get coconut cream organic. Things like that, you can get organic. And like I said, fruits and vegetables, certain fruits and vegetables are supplied as organic. But again, you can't say, oh, I need half a kilogram of, I don't know, swede and assume that there's going to be organic swede available. These are obviously just my experience. I lived in Pukekohe and I live in South Taranaki now. So not the hugest areas with the most supply of anything. So that's just been my experience. As for local foods, there are generally farmers markets in most towns. I can't speak to kind of what the supermarkets buy or where they buy them from. You can find local suppliers of certain things. For example, in Taranaki, we have Green Meadows Beef. They used to supply supermarkets and then they kind of got a bit annoyed that they had such quality meat that they're really passionate about and they really look after their cattle well and they feed them well and they provide top quality meat and then that was just going into a supermarket so one week you could get green meadows beef from the supermarket and the next week you could get somebody who supplied kind of crappy meat and it was a bit of a, a mix and so they went off on their own and they supply you can do it like mail order so there are local companies like that that you can search out in your areas obviously it depends on where you live Taranaki is very much dairy industry and like Green Meadows beef they do beef here but then if you go to like Hawke's Bay there's a lot of fruit and you know it depends on where you live in New Zealand what's going to be most available locally. I will say that food is so expensive even local food I don't understand it like when we lived in England it was cheaper to buy New Zealand lamb in England than it is to buy it here so whatever government subsidies blah 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 that's just how it is lois also said i remember when i lived there i used to eat a filled roll which is called a submarine here i wonder which one came first i have no idea if things have shifted it's because i had to go and change batteries <sighs> every time okay lois also asked do you ever consume your native manuka honey it's 50 to 80 dollars a bottle here it's so expensive to buy yes we sometimes eat manuka honey it is super expensive currently though the honey that i have in my pantry is from my friend taryn who harvested it herself from her own bees so that's local raw honey and it is delicious but yeah we do sometimes buy manuka honey it is super super expensive everything's expensive here by the way if you hear voices and noises the boys are on school holidays and i'm not going to tell them to like be silent while I'm filming because this is their home and they're doing their thing so just ignore any background noise if you hear it okay Lois had lots of questions she also asked what are the food trends there 
I don't know because I don't watch mainstream TV. We watch like Netflix and things. I don't watch TV. I don't really watch the news or read newspapers or magazines. So I can't really comment on trends. I'm not really interested in that sort of thing. I know that plenty of people are gluten free and dairy free and it's the same everywhere. They put so much crap in our foods and whatever. Um, there are a lot of food allergies, same as anywhere really. But as for what's in fashion and what to cook, I really couldn't comment on that. Like we don't <laughs> eat out very often and if we do it's just like local restaurants which is like a local Indian restaurant or whatever. We don't eat at like trendy Auckland restaurants where you'd see what was in fashion so sorry I can't really answer that. She asked what are the current health food trends? Is the keto diet popular there? It's high fat low carb it's all the rage here. Yes that trend has hit New Zealand. I don't know if it's a trend. It's something that's really helpful to a lot of people and it's definitely something that people do here. It's not something that's uncommon. She asked, do you have a source of biltong down there? For those of you who don't know, biltong is a South African dried meat. It's spiced with black pepper and coriander and brown sugar and vinegar and then it's dried and it's kind of chewy. It's not as hard as beef jerky. It's delicious. I think it's delicious. Not everyone thinks it's delicious. If you haven't grown up with it in South Africa, you're probably just like, what is this? Like, I like it really chewy. They ask you when you buy it, do you want fat on it or not? And they ask like, how dry do you want it? And I'm like, the wetter the better. I want my breath to smell like a vampire after I've eaten it. So yes, we do have a local supply of biltong. It's in Stratford. It's um, a butchery there. And they supply biltong. I don't think they actually make their own biltong. They get it from somewhere in Auckland I think but it's delicious and we do like to stock up every now and again still on food questions from Lois don't think I've ever seen you use a barbecue or braai is it not popular there oh my goodness have you not been watching our vlogs we braai all the time or barbecue all the time like every single day in summer and in fact Grant did it the other day like in winter in between showers he was like running outside putting meat on the barbecue so we do it all the time it is definitely popular here and I don't know how you haven't seen us doing it. She asked, what is your national dish? I know that pavlova is the national dessert or is it still? Yeah, I'd say pavlova is quite popular here. I don't think there's any like one national dish. I will say fish and chips here in New Zealand is actually better than the fish and chips in England. Obviously I can't eat it anymore, but it's good stuff here. Um, so that's quite popular. If I had to pick like one iconic dish, I would probably say sausage sizzle. Sausage sizzle is what's generally done as fundraisers or at schools and it's a piece of bread and you can put ketchup on, you can put onions on and then a sausage and then you kind of, it's like the sausage goes diagonally on the bread and then you just fold it and eat that and that's, you'll see that everywhere. So not really a dish, but that's what sausage sizzle is and you'll see it a lot in New Zealand. She asked, do you eat the local fish? Fish is eye-wateringly expensive here in New Zealand and I do not understand it because it's two islands. Like, really, why is fish so expensive? I'm talking like 30 plus dollars per kilo for fish. So we do eat fish occasionally, but not often. We'll eat salmon because I make salmon chowder and I'll usually get that on offer, but I don't generally buy a lot of fish just because it is so, so expensive. And then her last question is, what do you miss most from South Africa? Is there a store there that imports things from home? There are lots of stores here that import things from South Africa and also from England. I don't miss South Africa or much from South Africa because we left there 19 years ago. End of this year will be 19 years ago. So it's kind of like, that's like practically half my life and it's England that I miss when I miss anything but because there's so many things I just can't eat anymore like I miss cheese more than I miss any specific food from South Africa or from England I mean there's things that if I could eat them I would miss them but I can't eat them anyway so I don't know if that comes across how I mean it so like cinnamon grahams I really enjoyed that cereal in England but it's not like I'm eating cereal and wishing it was cinnamon grains because I can't eat cereal anyway. So 
it's not really something that I actively miss. The South African things that we do want, like Mrs. Ball's chutney, you can just buy off the shelf in Countdown. So that's not something that I miss. Next question is from Linwood who asked, question about driving there. Over here our steering wheels are on the left hand side of the car, the gas pedal is on the far right side and the brake pedal is to the left of the gas pedal closer to the door. Is your gas pedal on the left with the brake pedal on the right? No it isn't. So our steering wheel is on the right hand side of the car and our gas pedal or accelerator is on the right as well with the brake to the left of it. So that's exactly the same. The, the pedals are exactly the same even though the steering wheel is on the opposite side of the car and then depending on which brand of car you have or which make of car you have your indicators will either be on the right or the left like that can switch between makes and models also the petrol tank or the gas tank like that opening will be on the left or right depending on which car you have another question from Linwood is if I throw a triangle out of the car and the car is going 20 miles per hour and wind resistance is a thing that exists how many cupcakes can Pedro buy with one human skull duh obviously the answer is purple I'm surprised you even had to ask Mandy asks, do you still sell Jamboree nail products? No, I don't. I am going to go into that in a different video, but I no longer sell Jamboree nail products, even though I still think they are awesome. I do recommend them. She also asked, any suggestions for what I can do to promote nail growth and healthy nails? I'm on a tight budget, so I have to be mindful of that. I feel you on a tight budget. I am probably not the right person to ask about strong nails because my nails grow super super fast they, that's just how they are there's not anything I do to make that happen but they're not very strong at all so they grow fast but they're not healthy I mean they look fine but they yeah they're not good I do find that taking hair and nail supplements makes a difference but you have to give it at least three months before you feel any kind of difference because as you're taking the supplements and your body is forming new nail it's forming the nail from right down here so your nail forms from down here like inside your finger and then it will grow up and up and up and up and it takes like at least three months to grow all the way so you can't start taking a hair and nail supplement and then go oh but my nails are still brittle like on the ends you've got to wait for that new healthy growth to grow all the way up I do find they make a difference so I can't recommend any particular brand just see what is kind of in your budget also you can do things like moisturizing your nails I know some people love cuticle oil I found when I used cuticle oil my cuticles actually became drier it became dependent on the oil and created a kind of cycle so I'm not a huge fan of cuticle oil but I do believe in moisturizing your nails so you can just take lip balm even or like hand cream and really massage down here at your cuticles like where the nails are forming from and that can also help and then just a healthy diet like your body is creating new nail like it's got to make your nail out of something and if you're not eating the correct nutrients what's it going to build your nails from next question is from Ali who asked what are your goals that you hope to achieve before the end of the year mm, I haven't actually sat down and made like specific goals for the year by the way is there something I can feel something like tickling tickling and I can't find anything okay then I haven't actually sat and made like these are the goals I want to achieve by the end of the year like with a deadline or anything there's always things that are on the back of my mind that I'm kind of working on or working towards and I know that having a deadline does help to achieve goals especially if you tend to procrastinate but I find like when the bug bites I just want to do it or they things that don't really matter when they get done and so I'll do it when I feel the passion so I don't always rely on deadlines however I really really want to paint the house like so badly this spring we are determined to do that and that's obviously dependent on money we've had a lot of big expenses lately feeling the pinch we had Noah's braces deposit that was $1,500 we needed to buy a new washing machine that I think was $1,600 like it happens and we're kind of like trying to rebuild our savings again but as money becomes available I really want to paint the house it is so overdue and it's getting to the point now where things that was like a bit of a scuff on the paint or that was maybe like a tiny chip is starting to spread and it's going to become just that much of a bigger job if we let it go any longer we're gonna to have to end up sanding everything and 
so paint the house really want to get that done this spring other than that no specific goals that i want to achieve by the end of the year norma asked you mentioned you had to change the plug for your nail dryer she's talking about my led uv lamp I've ordered the same one. Where would I get an adapter for that? Norma, I didn't check where you live. If you live in the US, you're going to have to order one with a US plug. AliExpress generally sells things with either a US plug or an EU plug. I just order the ones with the EU plug because it's the same. We have the same voltage. I'm not sure if an LED lamp, if it matters that much. I know that you can plug in your US lamps here and it's fine you can just switch the plug but for appliances you need a transformer Norma maybe you don't live in the US I'm sorry I should have looked into that so if you are in a country that has the same voltage then you can literally just switch a plug and you can get that from any hardware store you can also just get an adapter and sometimes they come with an adapter so at the moment my softbox is behind me and that has a lamp fitting like you just had to screw a bulb in and that came with a plug that we don't have but it came with an adapter so i could just plug it into a new zealand outlet so i don't know if i've answered your question but I certainly took my time about it marina asked which youtubers do you enjoy watching my subscription list i had a bit of a declutter and i went through my subscription list and i unsubscribed to a bunch of channels and i got it down to i think about 150 like i subscribe to a lot of channels i don't watch everything that they upload but I have a lot of subscriptions currently though i'm really enjoying louise pentland's videos i spoke about her in my faves and fails and who else oh lucy wood is a new channel that i've discovered i really like her and then the bite shot like if i'm enjoying a channel i'll mention in my monthly favorites lc lima charlie asks what's your top beginner tip for a young photographer i'm talking about myself here haha <laughs> So my top tip is just do it, just get started. It's easy to get caught up in the research and the looking at inspirational pictures and learning about it. But the best way to learn is literally just get started. Use whatever camera you have, use your phone camera or get yourself just an inexpensive older model DSLR on a second hand site and just go for it. It's only by doing that you're really gonna learn and you're gonna bump up to your limitations and you're gonna realize, oh, I need this lens or now I need a tripod or like there's always equipment you're gonna need, but it's by doing, and also sometimes those limitations can force you to be more creative and to figure out ways of getting the image that you want despite not having that lens or tripod or whatever. I'd also recommend swallowing your pride, joining a photography group, or a camera club and asking for constructive criticism share an image that you're really proud of that you think is good ask for constructive criticism and then just try not to take it too personally so if somebody's giving you good critique they're going to tell you what they like about your image what you did right what works bear in mind this is all just their opinion and you can agree with it or disagree with it and then they're going to tell you areas of opportunity how you could improve it what you could do to make it a stronger image, what you could think about next time when you're taking the picture. So you can learn a lot from critique and from constructive criticism. Even if you don't want to submit your own images, I find the critique and the feedback given on the images at my camera club, I learn so much from that, even though they're not my images. And sometimes I agree and sometimes I disagree, but that can also clarify your style and what you want to gain from your images. So my tips are just get started and try to take on board some constructive criticism. I do have a photography Q&A video that you might find helpful and I will link that here for you. Robin asked, any tips for cleaning salt out of your car or cleaning car upholstery? Here in Alberta, they salt and gravel the roads during winter, so I'm not sure you'd have any experience with that, but I'm so frustrated with how dirty it still looks after I vacuumed. We don't have problems with salting and getting that into the car we don't have icy roads generally where i live but i remember from england that can be a problem and really i would just suggest hosing off your car mats with a pressure washer but there's kind of no point doing it in winter it's going to take longer to dry it's going to be a miserable wet cold job and they're just going to get dirty again so i'd suggest in spring when the weather's better just have a good spring clean haul out your carpets if you can pressure wash them and let them dry but if it's things like the carpet that you can't remove, I'm sorry, there's probably a video or tips online 
that can be of more help than I am because I don't really have much experience with that. So those are all the questions I'm going to answer in this video. I'm going to have to do a second one otherwise this one is just going to be like out of control long. Thanks so much to everyone who submitted questions. Don't forget to check out part two which will be coming tomorrow. I'll upload that tomorrow so that you don't have to wait too long for the second part of it. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.